I heard a familiar voice at the restaurant we were at for my daughter's birthday. That voice and the way of speaking were undoubtedly my husband, who was supposed to be on a business trip. Sorry, I thought I had made a reservation at the fancy restaurant. I messed up big time. Don't worry about it. I'm happy anywhere as long as I'm with you. Thanks. You are so sweet. God, I love you. Their conversation sounded like something out of a lovey dovey couple. There was no doubt. It was his affair in progress. Unaware of my presence, he continued professing his love. My previous wife passed away, you know. I was able to recover because of you. Holding the hand of his girlfriend, he earnestly spoke to her. Marry me. Let's be happy together. At that moment, my anger reached its peak. Previous wife? She passed away? What the heck is he talking about? Your wife is right here. Over time and working on weekends were all lies. Proposing to his girlfriend on our daughter's birthday is just unforgivable. My husband, who had been betraying us, would face reckoning the next day. My name is Nala. I'm a working wife in my sixth year of marriage. After graduating from college, I focused on my career at my major bank. And before I knew it, I was in my late twenties without a boyfriend. Freaking out, I joined a local singles party with my friends. And that's where I met the man who would become my husband. Kai was easygoing and had a positive impression. I was over the moon when he asked me out. After a year of going out, he popped the question. Babe, I will make you the happiest wife, so marry me. Oh my God, yes! I love you so much! And so, we got engaged. After that, we went to announce the news to my parents, who were as happy as us. Then, it was his family's turn. But his mother had already passed away. So there was only his father. As we headed to Dave's place, Kyle mentioned something about him for the first time. I have to admit, I'm not very comfortable around him. Oh, why? He's pretty stern, and he used to give me a hard time when I was younger. I see. I had no idea. He sounded nervous, so I tensed up a little as we approached the house. Contrary to my imagination, Dave gave me a warm welcome. While he seemed tough, he treated me with courtesy. Nala, he can be a handful sometimes, but please take care of him. Don't worry, Dave. I'm used to it by now. Haha. <laughs> Kyle, you are starting a family now. Take responsibility and be a good husband to her. I know that. And so, our first introduction to the in laws ended. Afterward, we got married, moved into a new apartment, and began our newlywed life. Right after we started living together, I realized that he couldn't do any housework. Well, he used to live alone, so it was more like he had no intention of doing it. Dirty laundry would be all over the floor, and he wouldn't even bother to clear the dishes after eating. I asked him to help with the housework once, but he simply dismissed it. Isn't that the wife's job when you get married? Are you seriously asking me to do it? I was totally stunned and couldn't say anything back to him. Since then, no matter how much I complained, he never improved his attitude. About two years into this kind of life, I found out I was pregnant. He was overjoyed. And looked forward to discovering whether it was a boy or a girl. My parents were thrilled to hear the news too. And Dave said, Take it easy on yourself from now on and have a healthy baby. Our child was blessed by everyone, which made me happier than anything. However, when my morning sickness kicked in, Kyle still didn't show any sign of helping me with housework. I was so frustrated. But I had to push myself to do the chores, no matter how unwell I felt. 
When I was eight months pregnant, he surprised me with a sudden statement. Hey, hon, I'm thinking about taking paternity leave. Huh? Really? Yeah. You know my company is Scandinavian, and a lot of my colleagues are from there. I see them taking leave and being involved in caring for their newborns. It's pretty cool. As you may know, Scandinavia is one of the most advanced regions when it comes to the family support system. Learning that he was aiming to become an involved dad made me happy. Thanks, love. It means a lot to me. I was feeling overwhelmed. It would be great if you could help with babysitting and housework. Leave them to me. I believed that he would change his way once our baby arrived. I was still hopeful back then. Later, I gave birth to a healthy girl named Emma. Kyle took three months of paternity leave, which was scheduled to start at the same time as the baby was born. However, he still didn't do anything contrary to my expectation. He would hold Emma and cool on her. But as soon as her diaper was wet or she started crying from hunger, he would hand her over to me. Her diaper must be wet and uncomfortable. Change it for her. No way. I don't want to do something so nasty. Fine. At least vacuum then. Uh? Seriously? I don't know how to do it. So better you do it. He didn't make any effort to learn how to take care of our baby, let alone help with housework. I was exhausted after giving birth and sleep deprived from the crying baby throughout the night. While I was busy doing everything, he was just lounging at home, playing with his phone. Sometimes he would go out somewhere, eat out alone or shop and then return. I was getting upset. Wondering what he was on paternity leave for in the first place. I even thought about talking to his dad about it, but I decided to hold my tongue to avoid unnecessary conflict. Emma grew rapidly, and Kyle returned to work after the paternity leave. I took a year off from work and planned to put her in daycare when I started working again. Time passed, and Emma turned three. We might have appeared to be a happy family at first glance, but my frustrations had been building up for the past few years. Kyle, as usual, wouldn't lift a finger when it came to housework and childcare. Moreover, for the past six months or so, he'd become increasingly busy with work, often working late on weekdays. He even claimed to have to go in on weekends which was supposed to be the only time he could spend with Emma. Since I had been handling everything related to her, she had naturally become attached to me. Still, I thought I had to support Kyle because he was busy with work. So I somehow managed things day by day. As Emma's fourth birthday approached, I brought up an idea when he came home late one night. Hey honey, I want to talk to you about something. What? I'm tired, you know. He replied with a hint of annoyance, but I continued with a serious expression. Emma's birthday is next Wednesday. I really want us to celebrate as a family, so can you try to come home early? No way. I'm swamped with work right now. Anyway, I've got a business trip that day. Oh, come on. You've been spending no time with her for a while now. She misses you. Yeah, right. She's always glued to you, calling for her mommy. That's because you. Before I could raise my voice, he interrupted, looking annoyed. Let's drop it. I don't want to argue about this anymore. He headed off to take a shower. Left behind. I was utterly shocked. Then, Emma's birthday arrived. Kyle had gone on a business trip early in the morning. When I asked Emma what she wanted to eat for her birthday, she energetically replied, Kids meal! She loved it at the nearby chain restaurant. I agreed to her request, and after picking her up from daycare, we headed there. However, it was closed for renovation. Well, we have no choice. 
Let's go to a different location. And so, we ended up going to another one a bit farther away. The place was crowded, and we had to wait for about 20 minutes before being seated. I'm really hungry! You can eat as much as you want. We'll get some cake too. While having a conversation, I looked up, and my heart leaped out of my chest. The man sitting diagonally across with his back to us looked just like Kyle. Emma's meal was brought to her, and a pasta dish was placed in front of me. I stealthily observed the other table. Then, I overheard their conversation. I'm sorry, Monica. I made a reservation at the fancy restaurant, but I messed up the date. And now we are here. The voice and the way of speaking were undoubtedly Kyle, who was supposed to be on a business trip. Then a woman, referred to as Monica, said, Don't worry about it. I'm happy anywhere as long as I'm with you. Thanks. You are so sweet. I was sure it was a scene of his affair. I operated my phone nervously and pressed the record button. His voice was being recorded on the phone. I had planned to have this conversation in a proper restaurant, but... What is it? As you know, my previous wife passed away. I was able to recover because of you. Oh, baby. Holding her hands, he said with a serious tone. So, Monica Reed, marry me. Let's be happy together. Her eyes welled up as she responded. Kyle, let's be happy together for your previous wife's sake too. At that moment, my anger reached its peak. Previous wife? She passed away? What the heck is he talking about? Your wife is right here. Overtime and working on weekends were all lies. Proposing to his girlfriend on our daughter's birthday is just unforgivable. Mommy, what's wrong? You look scary. Emma's voice made me snap out of it. Oh, it's nothing. Here, have some cake. I looked up again, but they had already left the restaurant. After celebrating her birthday with a forced smile, we returned home, and I took action immediately. The next day, after finishing work, I waited for Kyle to return home. The door swung open, and he casually said, I'm home. I stood in the hallway and immediately started acting on my plan. Welcome back. I went to the trouble coming back from my grave for you. Huh? He looked perplexed. Grave? What are you talking about? Well, you said I passed away, right? What? He still didn't seem to get it, so I played back the recording from the previous day. My previous wife passed away. I was able to recover because of you. So Monica Reed, marry me. Let's be happy together. I had edited the recording to be loud and clear. His voice echoed through the hallway. At that moment, his face turned pale. What the heck is this? Were you in the restaurant yesterday? Obviously, that's where I heard you saying this. God damn it! This is an invasion of privacy. Proposing boldly in a public place, and now you are talking about privacy? But wait, what's the deal? I'm supposed to have passed away without knowing it. Th that's... I sighed as he stammered. You know... Divorce is inevitable after this. I'm going to claim alimony from you, so be prepared. Divorce? Alimony? Hold on! Do you have a problem with that? I grimaced, and he blurted out with a red face. It, it was just a joke! A joke? Right. There's nothing going on between me and her. You can't just come after me for alimony without evidence. Then, a couple of figures appeared from the living room. What? Monica? What are you doing here? And Dad too? Monica was glaring at him with an intense expression. 
and Dave was standing with his arms crossed, showing his anger. After I got home from the restaurant, I searched for Monica Reed on social media, and contacted her, revealing everything. Judging from their conversation, I had thought she didn't know the truth. I was right. She was terribly shaken, and apologized to me. I accepted her apology, and asked her to help me. I also explained the situation to Dave, who rushed over. I left Emma with one of my mummy friends, and ambushed Kyle with them. Jeez, Monica! He mutters as if in a daze. Then she started screaming at him. You said you were lonely because your wife passed away, right? She's still alive, and there's even a child. What's up with that? Th that you proposed shamelessly, even though you're already married. I was a fool to accept this garbage. She threw the ring box at him. It hit him square in the face, and he crouched down in pain. Ouch! What the heck are you doing? I'm going to sue you for marriage fraud. I'm coming after you for tons of money, so you better not run. She huffed and puffed. Kai was still crouching and stared her up in bewilderment. The next to speak was Dave. You are really a fool. You betrayed Nala and Emma, and on top of that, you deceived a young woman. You are an absolute idiot who was strayed from the past. It's empathetic as it gets. He then approached Kyle, and delivered a powerful slap. There was a sharp sound, and Kyle groaned. <clears throat> He writhed in pain, clutching his face but not uttering a word. I watched him with a cold gaze. Come on, get up. First, apologize to Nala. Dave's face was contorted in anger, and he pulled him up. Tears welled up in Kyle's eyes as he began to apologize. I'm so sorry, Nala. Please forgive me. Please say you forgive me. Otherwise, my old man's going to. I don't even want to think about it. He trembled and hung his head down, and I gave him a tongue lashing. Who would forgive you? I don't want a husband who doesn't do any housework or childcare. And on top of that, cheats without a care in the world. We are definitely getting divorced, even if I have to fight in court. I will make sure I get custody and alimony. Oh no! He looked dazed while Dave grabbed him by the scruff of his neck and dragged him out of the house. Then Monica took my hand and apologized again. I too said, "I apologize for my husband's behavior." Later, my divorce with Kai was finalized, and I gained custody of Emma. I claimed hundred thirty thousand dollars in lump sum as alimony for his infidelity and child support. Apparently, Monica also managed to get some compensation from him. Of course, he couldn't afford such a large sum, so Dave lent him the money and paid it all. He was furious about the whole incident and made Kai quit his job. He arranged for him to work at an acquaintance's forestry company. Kyle is currently deep in the woods, cutting trees and repaying the debt to Dave. He's never done manual labor before, and is put to hard work under a younger boss. He's said to be toiling away in utter desperation. I have no sympathy for him whatsoever. On the other hand, I used the alimony to move and start a new life with Emma. I was worried that she might miss her dad, but she's been smiling and said, "As long as mommy is with me, it's okay." I make sure she sees Dave regularly, and he showers her some gifts every time. I'm looking forward to watching her grow and living life with a positive attitude.